So we just did a sort of high level overview of this module. Let's continue a little bit in the overview mode, but get a little bit more into detail. Uh, this module is, of course, focusing on energy. And in this video, we'll talk about sort of three questions with regard to energy. One is sort of, what is it? And that has to do with things like, you know, how do we actually think about energy? What are its characteristics as a quantity? What are its units? And so on. Um, related to that is the question of where can you store it? And finally related to that is also the question of how can it be transferred? And we'll deal with all three of these questions in, in more detail subsequently, but this you know, is a high-level overview. So from a sort of what is it perspective, it's maybe useful to recall momentum and to compare momentum to energy. And I'll use NRG for energy here. So momentum is a conserved quantity. And when we say it's a conserved quantity, what we actually mean is that it is something that you can actually count up for a system and keep track of for a system and that the amount of it in the system doesn't change unless some crosses the system boundary. Right? And in the case of momentum, it's relatively easy to sort of count it up for, the, for a system. Right? We've talked about this sort of idea that if I've got a system that has a bunch of particles in it, I can simply add up the momentum of each particle inside the system to figure out what the total momentum of the system is. Um, energy is also a conserved quantity. And so like um, momentum, you can sort of count up the total amount of energy that is stored in the system in order to figure out that quantity. And then you can ask the question, does that quantity change? And the answer should be, well, that quantity only will change if energy crosses the system boundary. Um, one thing that's maybe a little bit different between energy and momentum is that unlike momentum, which you can easily write an expression for what the total amount of energy in the system is, energy is a little bit different. Energy, the energy in that's stored in a system actually has to do both with what the state of the individual particles are as far as their velocities, but also has to do with where they are. So it tends to be a little bit harder to write down what the total energy of the system is. One sort of common way to write it down is to write down that the total energy of the system is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the system in. But then you need to ask the question, well, how do I figure out what the total kinetic energy of the system is? How do I figure out the total potential energy of the system? And even in this case, you start to ask some questions about, well, are there other places that energy could be stored? So although energy is a conserved quantity, it's one that actually is sometimes a little bit harder to calculate than momentum, although also at times that it's easier to calculate, as we'll see for some cases. Um, one sort of difference between momentum and energy is the fact that energy is a scalar and momentum is a vector quantity. Right? So when you say that momentum is conserved, you're actually saying that three different things are conserved if you're in three dimensions, momentum in each of the three directions that you're interested in, whereas energy is a scalar quantity. And finally, from a unit's perspective, if you look at momentum, you can see the units of momentum are kilograms, meters per second, and the units of energy are kilograms, meters squared per second squared, which is also known as a joule. And so that's a really inadequate answer to the question of what is energy, because all I've told you that energy is, it's some quantity that's conserved. So if you know how to count up that quantity, you can then ask the question, how does that quantity change? Well, let's actually dig now a little bit into this question of where is it stored. Um, I said here that the, this sort of idea that if I want to calculate the total energy in the system, I'm going to take the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the system. But let's dig into that a little bit. And if you actually um, think about different ways that energy can be stored, one sort of high-level way that you can store energy is in motion. So when a particle is moving, it has a kinetic energy. Um, in fact, the kinetic energy of a moving particle is one-half the mass of the particle 
times the velocity of the particle squared. And when I say the velocity of the particle squared, this is simply the dot product of the velocity with itself. Um, so that's one way that you can store energy. And typically, it, you actually could think about that at a couple of levels. And I want to emphasize these two levels. One is a macro level, where we actually imagine a system where big chunks of matter that are sort of at the, at the large scale are moving around. And then you also can think about kinetic energy at a micro level. So when I talk about the macro level, I'm imagining, say, a ball that's flying through the air. Right? A ball flying through the air has a kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy has to do with what the mass of this ball is times the velocity squared divided by 2. At a micro level, though, if I sort of zoom into that ball, right, I would find that inside the ball I would have some matrix of atoms that are bonded together, and those atoms are all going to be vibrating back and forth. right? And so each atom here has some energy that's associated with it due to the fact that it's vibrating. And since it's vibrating, it's moving. And since it's moving, that means that atom has some kinetic energy. So at a, at a macroscopic level, we think about sort of macroscopic things moving, having kinetic energy. But then inside that macroscopic thing, there's also been some additional energy stored in the microscopic vibrations of items inside of that. Um, and so this sort of macroscopic form of kinetic energy is what we would typically think of as sort of mechanical kinetic energy. Whereas this sort of microscopic form of kinetic energy is more th what we would actually form call more thermal kinetic energy. That is, this is the, when we talk about something getting hot, part of it's getting hot is the idea that you're storing some energy in the motion of the atoms inside of the object. Um, you can also store energy as potential energy. And this is, this is maybe a little bit harder for people to wrap their brains around. And part of it has to do with the fact that kinetic energy seems like it's kind of directly related to momentum. In fact, I could rewrite kinetic energy as the momentum squared divided by 2 times the mass. So there seems like there's some sort of relatively direct relationship between kinetic energy and momentum. Potential energy, on the other hand, is not stored in motion. Potential energy is actually stored in interactions. And when I say it's stored in interactions, let me sort of give an example, a couple examples of that. Um, one sort of simple example of that is to think about a mass that's connected to a spring, right? When I move the mass and I compress this spring, right? So I'm going to say I move the mass over here and now the spring is tightly compressed. Um, I've done some work to the system and I've sort of poured some energy into the system by doing some work. But where that work has gone is not um, into motion. It's gone into the spring, right? What I've actually done, if I, make, if I sort of zoom in to this spring, is that I've actually taken the atoms in that spring and I've compressed them closer together than they would like to be, right? So I've actually taken these atoms and sort of moved them over a little bit, which means that within the sort of microscopic interactions that make up the, the sort of atomic structure of that spring, I've actually caused there to be some energy stored in that interaction and in the fact that those particles are closer together. You know, by the same token, when I think about, you know, the sort of moon orbiting the Earth, right, there is energy stored in the interaction between the moon and the Earth. And if I were to try to sort of pull the moon away, that energy, I would have to put energy into the system. I'd be sort of stretching that kind of interaction spring that connects the moon to the Earth. So potential energy is energy that's stored in interactions. And you can also think about that on both a macroscopic level and a microscopic level. Right? So on a macroscopic level, for example, you might think about gravitation. Right. So gravity is an interaction. You can store energy in that gravitational interaction. And so the fact that you know, a ball, when it's dropped, um, increases in speed can be talked about as the potential energy that's stored in the gravitational interaction turning into kinetic energy in motion. Um, you can also think about um, things like you know, macroscopic forms of interactions like springs, um, so sort of elastic storage of energy in elastic um, interactions. Uh, certainly, electromagnetic forces can also be thought of at a macroscopic level, right? So when you think about the sort of energy that is stored 
um, when you, you know, take, when you put, you know, you, when you're, you know, pouring energy into, a, say, a rail gun to fire, fire a, uh, a carriage using electromagnetic forces, that there's a conversion of energy from electromagnetic storage into kinetic energy in that case. But by the same, in the same way that kinetic energy has both a macro and micro scale, you can also think about potential energy at a microscopic level. So if we, for example, talk about chemical energy, right, so the amount of energy that's stored, the amount of potential energy that some substance have, has, that has to do with what the configuration of bonds is inside the, ad, inside the molecules and has to do with sort of what those electrostatic interactions are between atoms inside of the system. So in the same way that um, you can think about there being thermal kinetic energy, you can also think of, similarly, you can also think about there being thermal potential energy. So in this sort of vibrating atom case, right, I've effectively got springs between these atoms, and when one of the when two atoms come closer together, there's actually energy that's stored in the potential energy in the interaction, which is then turned into kinetic energy in the, in the vibration as the atoms go back and forth. So there's both at both the kinetic level, both with regard to motion and with regard to energy storage and potential, you can think both at a macroscopic level and at a microscopic level. Typically, you know, because this is a class that we're focusing on the big and slow, we're going to be looking just at these sort of macroscopic levels, but it's very much the case that you also can store energy at the microscopic level, and in fact that you can convert energy from being stored at the macroscopic level to being stored at the microscopic level.